Hey guys, welcome back. For those that don't know me, my name is Michelle and I help people overcome narcissistic abuse by using trauma-informed coaching combined with somatic modalities. And so today I want to talk about three things that the narcissist wants to happen during special occasions. Okay. And it doesn't matter what special occasion, when you understand this, right. And some of this information is hard to wrap your mind around when you start really looking at what they do and the why behind it. It's almost like, like, why? Why would somebody want to be like that? Why would somebody want those results? It doesn't make sense, but it is how they think and how they are. And when you can finally wrap your mind around it, then you can stop getting sucked into hoping for something different and then just getting disappointed over and over again. Okay. So let's jump into the three things that narcissists hope will happen or three things they want from you during special occasions. Number one, this is a hard one to wrap your mind around, but if you're dealing with a covert or a cerebral narcissist, they want you to look bad. Now, I know, like this was so hard for me to be like, well, if I'm with somebody that says they love me, that wants to be with me, wants to be with me, why would they want me to look bad? Like, wouldn't you want your partner to look good? Wouldn't you want people to love and adore your partner? Isn't that some sort of a good reflection on you? Well, in a normal, healthy world, yeah, that's normally how it is. We love when people are like, wow, you're with such a great person. That person is awesome. To a narcissist, people looking at you in a good light means they're looking at you and that automatically deflates them. In order for them to stay feeling good, there always has to be like a yin-yang balancing act. So they hope that people look bad at you. And so one of the ways they, they cause that to happen before you get to wherever you're going or before people arrive at your house, whatever's happening during the special occasion, they will do something to make you feel pain or shame. They push those buttons that they know you have, right? They push them on purpose. You're feeling awful. And then you're so much in your pain that you don't realize that they stop. They stop that bad behavior that they're doing. And suddenly they're like super helpful. And they're talking to you so sweet in front of other people. And them talking to you sweet in front of other people does not make you feel good, right? Because you know what just happened. And it makes you angry. And so you probably respond with tension and you're frustrated and you make it known. Well, what other people are seeing is, wow, he or she, they're so nice to their partner. And look at how nasty their partner is. And that's exactly how they set it up all the time for people to look at you in a bad light. How they treat you behind closed doors is very different. And they suddenly switch but you're so in your emotion, you don't even notice it. And when you do notice it, it's so hypocritical. It makes you frustrated and people see that frustration. And narcissists use that to cause you to look bad. And the way people look at the narcissist at this point is like, oh, wow, what an amazing person. Like their partner is so nasty and they're so sweet. Wow. And that's exactly what they're hoping will happen. Number two is they want and or expect you to carry their negative emotions. So if a narcissist is feeling anxious, they will do things to make you anxious. The second you're anxious, it's almost like you've just alleviated them and now they feel better. If a narcissist is feeling shame, they will provoke you and, and they will not stop poking until you feel shame. And then the second you feel shame, they feel better. And the reason has to do with how narcissists work through their feelings, if you can even call it that. When a narcissist has a feeling they don't like, right? A healthy person, when we have something that we don't like inside, we work through it. We're like, oh, I'm sad. I don't, why am I sad? What do I need to do? We, we figure out what our emotion needs. Well, narcissists don't like to claim or take ownership of any emotion they think is a bad emotion. So in order for them to not see it when it comes up inside of their body, they fling it, they project it onto someone else. 
And so they'll, they'll accuse you of being that very same thing that's inside of them. And the second they see it in you, their brain goes, oh, see, that wasn't in me. That's in him or her. I'm good. And that's how they work through their feelings. And so that's why it's so confusing and chaotic to be in a relationship with a narcissist because you're constantly being accused of things and you're like, that's not me, that's you. But they don't ever take ownership of that. The reason I'm saying this is because during the holidays, one of the reasons why they get so aggressive and why they just seem so bent on ruining a special occasion is because when you're feeling happy and you're feeling excited, which is what we hope to feel during a special occasion, it sheds light or they finally see what they're feeling, which is a lack of happiness. And they're feeling their negative feelings when they see your positive feelings. And so they have to switch. They have to provoke you into negative feelings for them to feel better. It's crazy. But once you start mastering emotional boundaries, you can learn to stay in your own energy despite their negative energy. The third thing that they would love, and this is important to, to remember because I know that when there are special occasions, the focus is on how to handle them, right? How to deal with toxic people during special occasions. We also want to be careful because they would love for you to be so focused on them that you're not even in the moment and you're not even enjoying or relaxing enough to be in your body and enjoy the moment and focus on the special occasion because you're like a radar looking 24 seven at what they're going to do or say, trying to be two steps ahead of them. Now, I understand that we have to be aware of what people do and say, but remember that the most empowering thing you can do to combat toxic people, to not absorb what they're trying to fling onto you is to learn to be in the moment, to be authentic and to be connected to you. That is way more powerful than memorizing everything they might do and say. So of all the tips I could give you, to me, the most empowering one would be to really be aware of you. Be aware of what you're feeling. Be aware of what you need. Be aware of what your thoughts are. Be aware of, are you supporting yourself? Because again, they would want your focus to be on them. And when your focus is on them, you're in survival. You're not living and you're not enjoying the moment. And again, if you're struggling with family members and you have to be around people that are toxic, not because you want to be, but because you have to be, remember to check out Thrivers because we are an online support. We meet live every week and we work through the challenges of overcoming the trauma that those relationships cause. We do that work together.